Uh, I want to ask you some specifics about this tournament. We'll start with that, if you don't mind. Um, so your semifinal was against Nikolina Horniak, much improved player. I think you said you only played once before in three wall. Yeah. Scores weren't very close, but uh, what can you say about his game? How he's improved? Well, he did a great win against Andy, so uh, he obviously he's up and coming. Uh, if he played more tournaments, uh, I think he would trouble a lot of top players even more. So, sure. Uh, he's obviously got a great game. So. Um, you know, he's certainly one for the future. He seems to be the best U.S. prospect coming through now. Sure. I'd say, you know, the, the ones he played with the best for years. Great. Good to hear. Okay. And then you played Mul Mulkerns in the final today, fellow Irishman. Um, I think, I need to check on this, but I think he might have done something that's pretty unique that might you might not even have done. He made the USHA National Finals while he was still in college. I think a very small number of players I'd have done say that. so, yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. He, still, he still has another year left as well. So, right. Um, maybe two years left in college. So. Right, so what can so you say about his game as well? Again, it wasn't close to <coughs> but... Um, well, I think he was tired, um, mm -hmm. you know, it probably would have been closer had he been tired, but, I, you know, I still, at this point, I'm still confident I, beaten him at this point, but obviously he just turned 20 in January, so, you know, when I was that age, I, I certainly seems to be better than Martin, myself and Tony and Owen, and the same at Dermot Nash, you know, he just turned 22, uh, Killian Carroll, he didn't come here, he just turned 20 this month, uh, them three seem to be really up and coming now, and um, I suppose outside of Nikolai, you know, you can't see any, there's there's be no other U.S. players that's going to trouble them sure. uh, in any way. So, um, so they seem to be the future, you know. Sure. Okay. Do you play Martin much back home? I don't. I don't really. But we played a bit coming into this tournament because okay. not many players were. There's no one playing back home. They sure. were on the big courts. So, um, so we played a, played a wee bit. Okay. Any specific strategy against him today, or just play your game? Um. Obviously, you know, I try to look at my opponent. You know, and, and to see where I can capitalize on some of the weaknesses. But generally, I, I just play my own game. You know, I'd like to think I've raised the bar. And it's up to them to come up. You know, when I lost to Luis back in 2008, you know, I had to, you know, they had caught up. I had to try and reestablish myself sure. and uh, redefine how I was playing. So until that happens, I try to stay ahead of it, obviously, and avoid it happening. But uh, if it does happen, then I'll. Probably try, you know, have to try and reevaluate things and see what I can change and try and get back on top. But um, you know, you, you, I can't keep going forever either. So you know, I appreciate that. You know, it could happen at any time. So that always oh, spurs me on. You know, this sure. could all change overnight. You sure. Know? The, okay. the landscape, one, one, a couple of bad points, the whole landscape of things could change. Uh, you know, you see now Martin that charity yesterday. Uh, you know, that changed the whole perspective of things back in Ireland. Uh, you know, uh, he beat Robbie as well, so I'm not going to, I don't know, I'm nearly 99% sure now I'm not going to play the All-Ireland Championships next year, so it'll leave it wide open for, for, for the other players to try, okay. and, try and win it. Sure. Uh, let's talk a little bit about training preparation. What are you doing nowadays to uh, <coughs> get ready for a tournament like this? Uh, I, I probably didn't train as hard, to be honest, for this tournament as... I wasn't playing football this year, so um, so I've changed things, things a wee bit. Um, I was struggling a wee bit with motivation as well. Um, I thought after Seattle, I, I would. I trained hard in the early part of the year, but since that, uh, you know, probably stay fresher for my games at this sure. stage, and I just try and rely on my experience. And uh, so far, it's been working all right. Okay. So we'll see you now. I'll take a break for a few weeks. Okay, that's kind of the next thing I wanted to ask about kind of short-term goals. Are, are there? What's the next big event on your circle on um, your calendar? I suppose well, the U.S. Open, obviously, and uh, probably play some of them race for eight tournaments next year. Right. Um, just if I can get time off work and uh, get over to some of them. Uh, normally, at this point, you'd be looking. Well, obviously, I'm focused on the U.S. Open at this point, and you know, then you look at the All Ireland Championships. But I'm just going to play doubles, I think, next year. So really my whole focus, is, I think, for the next few years, I just take it one year at a time, but my main focus is this tournament next year, you know. Great. Um, you know, I just take it year by year, you know. Maybe just one more year, we'll 
see. So at this point, I'll just take it year by year. So I might not, I might not be motivated or come along as the US Nationals you know, to try and win another one. Okay, sure. I wanted to ask you about that as well. You mentioned motivation. Um, you have nothing more to prove at this point. You know, you've won eight national championships. I know you're still very driven and focused, though. What what drives you at this point? What do you what, what really makes you get out there and want to go after it? And, uh, um, I suppose it's just a natural competitiveness as well. You know, a lot of it's that. Like I, I just want to win every match I play. Um, um, so I think a lot of it is just that. Uh, you know, I went to Seattle a few weeks ago, maybe six weeks, seven weeks ago, not too concerned. Going into it, I was like, I'm not too concerned about the results here, I just want to get the games and whatnot. But when I got there, like, it just didn't pan out like that. You know, I was indifferent whether I won or lost, but I learned a lot that weekend. I realised that, you know, like, when I got there, I was like, well, no, I, don't, I don't want to lose. I, I, it just naturally kicks in, so. Sure. Um, but I feel more relaxed as well. <coughs> as you say, you know, I, I won them titles and no one can ever take them from me. So, you know, even back in Ireland, I, I, I've got a bit more because uh, I feel the pressures on the young players. They've got a long way ahead of them to try and emulate, you know, some of the titles they have. So I, I capitalise on that. Uh, you know, they have the hunger. Uh, my natural competitors, I think, they match them in hunger always. Uh, so then I just try to relax and. and, and uh, Congrats again, man. Thanks, You alright? I think we're doing an interview here. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. No problem. So, <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I think one thing people think, you know, is pretty remarkable about, about you is uh, how you man manage to stay hungry. With, uh, all these other players coming up, you know, you're, you're, you've you been king of the mountain now for a long time. There's nothing really more to prove, so that's one thing. Yeah. That I think people well, it's a good challenge as well, you know. It's a sure. challenge to try and beat them, you know, and it's... It's just a test of it. You know, it's always a battle with yourself, really. You know, I'm not trying to prove anything to anyone else. You know, I just, I just like the challenge sure. to try and win. Sure. Okay. Well, I want to ask a little bit more about that because you know, it's now is about the time we, we. A lot of people are starting to talk about legacy and where you are in the grand scheme of the pecking order, things like that. You know, you've hit some pretty big milestones here. Fred Lewis had six national championships. You passed him up. Chapman and Playtac, I believe, each had nine. Uh, Naughty Senior, as you probably know, had 11. Are those numbers something you think about at all or aim for? No, uh, at this point, I just tried to think of nine. You know, I tried to get the nine. And, okay. You know, I, certainly 11 would probably be on me, you know. So mm. I think if I hadn't break my finger that year, I, I would have made a good stab at it, you know. But because um, I missed the Nationals two years ago. Uh, yeah. I, was I felt I was doing pretty good up to that point. So it's a bit of, bit of a... I really regret those out of my control, there's nothing I could do. Sure. But uh, I just paid me up and I, I might have nine in a row, <coughs> in a row now if I hadn't uh, missed that title. But that's, that's life, you just got to roll out the punches. And sure. Like I said, I don't, I don't think about that. I, I just Next year I just like to try and get to nine uh, the following year. It might take me two years to get there, but if I can get there, I, you know, I think I'd be content with my lot. But okay. at the same time, I'm still happy enough with what, what I have and grateful. Sure. So you haven't thought necessarily about whether you'll play into your late 30s at this level or 40s or anything like that? No. It's just kind of one year at a time is how you look at it? Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. like I said, the landscape, you know, loss here and there, you know, I might just say, right, right, I know, right? It's time to, time to I know. Pa pass on the pattern to someone else, you know, and sure. let them go. So I try not to, you know, that it can overwhelm me, all that stuff. So I, I just focus on each tournament as it comes and okay. do my best and, you know. You know, eventually I'm probably going to lose some part along the line, but I'm going to just try and put that off as far as I can and, okay. um, you know, see will I respond to a loss or, you know, at that stage maybe I'll just leave it, you know. Sure, okay. See who knows. So that being said, do you think at all about how you want to be remembered when people say 20, um, 50 years from now, Paul Brady, do you want yeah. to be thought of as the greatest of all time, the top 10, any Well, that that's like an that? intangible goal, you know, that's yeah. all very... <laughs> objective to, to people, you know, I can't control that, like, I, I just want to win as many titles as I can, and whatever people say after that is up to them, and it's, it's a lot of just proving things to myself, uh, you know, obviously I want to try and raise the standard of the game 
trade it, it raised the level of play to an intensity that no one else ever had. Um, and um, so I'm, I don't really focus on how many or numbers, or okay. I just focus on trying to every time I go start training again to, to try and get faster and stronger and better and more clever in how I play and try to develop, always trying to develop how I play uh, and improve it. Uh, Outside of that, like what people say, there's nothing really I can do about that. I can just sure. try and win each title as it comes. And um, like I say, you know, you try to say intangible goals like that. You know, where, where you come in the pecking order of the greatest. So for me, it's just to keep winning and winning and winning and see where it ends up when, it all, when it's all over. Okay. Uh, that's something that I think about when, when I decide to hang up the gloves. Great. Well, Paul, you've definitely set the bar for uh, men's handball here over the last decade, so we're really glad you made it over to this event. And, uh, yeah, congratulations again on the, on the huge number eight win. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you um, at some other events and certainly next year at the Minneapolis Nationals. All right, congrats, Paul. Thanks very much.